Hi, Bloop Animation fans. My name is David Andrade, and I'm from Theory Animation. And today, I'm going to be giving you an overview of how to go from Maya character animating to Blender character animating. In this short tutorial video, we're going to go over common shortcuts and things that you would do in Maya and how to do them in Blender. I hope you enjoy the video, and if you did, please leave some feedback in the comments below. Now, a lot of us at Theory came from Maya, and we've had quite a bit of fun learning the differences between the two programs. And while we have noticed that the buttons and the configurations are all different, the principles of animation are always the same. So we decided to make this little tutorial series to help animators transitioning from Maya into Blender. Let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about panels. In Maya, you have tools on the left, you have a shelf, you have a submenu up here, you have even more menus up here. You have a channel box, you have an attribute editor, you have a time slider, you have a frame range slider, you have your navigation controls, and you have user preferences and a script editor, and you have render settings. A lot of buttons and a lot of hidden settings. Okay, so in Blender, the philosophy is just to show you everything that you need without having to hunt through menus. So you notice a lot of things will be contextual depending on what mode, and you can see what mode, what mode you're in, all right? On the left are tools. Uh, in fact, you can toggle this on and off by hitting the T button, T for tools. You have translate, rotate, scale. Origins are Blender's version of a pivot. Inserting keyframes, which we'll go over soon, and a grease pencil. On the right, we have the property shelf. You can toggle that by hitting N. And that'll show you things like lens, 3D cursor, display, and transform, which we'll get to in a second. If you ever find these menus too small, you can always just drag out these panels. You can also hold down middle mouse click to scroll between them, or control middle mouse click to zoom the panels. Now let's talk about the properties panel, which is not the property shelf, so let's turn that off. Properties panel is right here, and you can tell because this little icon, and there you go, properties, and it shows you everything that you need about your scene. This is very similar to Maya, Maya's attribute editor. In order to really see it in use, we're going to make a quick, uh, we'll make a sphere. All right. Here we are, attribute editor, and you can see all the attributes about the sphere and its shape. So in Blender, we're going to make a quick sphere. So let's hit Shift A, Mesh, and UV Sphere. Okay, great. So now you can see location, rotation, scale. Same thing. Translate, rotate, scale, shear, etc. Pivots, display. All of that can be found in here. And some other things like adding a group and its relationship to other things. Okay, so let's talk about manipulating things. So in Maya, you can hit W, E, and R. And in Blender, you would hit G, R, and S. Now you notice there's a little manipulator icon here in Maya. And we have it in here too. Now what if you want to say limit the axis and go only up and down? Well, in Maya, up and down is Y, so we can click on the Y and go up and down. In Blender, it's Z. We can click on it and go up and down. Say you only wanted to go on the X and the Y. So you could hit G and then Shift Z, and you could move along the X and Y axis. Kind of fun. You could do the same thing here. You could click this little box, and there you go. You can move it along the X and the Y axis. Or you could click on the Z, or you could click on the X. Now, you can do this with rotates as well. In Maya, you could hit rotation, or you could hit E, and spin it along any certain axis. And same thing in Blender. You could hit R and Z, R and X, or R and Y. Now, Maya has this cool like little compass thing. You can click right in the middle and start dragging anywhere. And Blender also has a compass thing. If you hit R once, you'll get something kind of fun like this to rotate along the view. But if you hit R twice, you get your compass. And to scale something in Maya, you would hit R. 
And in Blender, you would hit S. You could limit it by hitting Z. Now, another cool thing in Blender is you can scale depending on how it's pointing. So let's pretend we rotated it in this direction, right? It's not exactly right on. So then I hit S to scale and I hit Z. Now the first Z is gonna scale only globally. The second Z will scale along the local axis. This works for X and Y or Shift Z and Shift Z again. Really, really handy. Now let's pretend that you had everything in a weird sort of rotation and scale and it's really tiny. Maybe it's even inverted and really tiny. It's over there. How do you undo it? In uh, Blender, you would just hit Alt, S, R, and G, and that will zero out the scale, rotation, and location. And in Maya, I guess you could just select everything and you would have to hit zero here and hit one here. Now in constraints in Maya, it's on the top left, we turn on animation and we have a constraints submenu come up. This is really powerful because you can do parent constraints and constraints. So let's do a quick parent constraint. Just gonna select the two, click on parent, and let's rotate it. Look at that, cool. Now in Blender, you can also add a parent constraint. It's called a child of. So why don't we make a duplicate real quick? And we're gonna go add constraint, child of, and this thing is called spear. So we're gonna type in spear. Great. And now you'll notice that the moment we rotate the spear, it'll follow it. But there's a slight problem. Let's pretend that this spear was over here. Let's try it again. Add constraint, child of, spear, and it shifts. So to maintain that offset, it's called set inverse. Check that out. Now in Maya, set inverse would be called maintain offset, and that's automatically checked on. A Blender also has a graph editor, and to get to it, there's a few ways. You can go at the top here and switch it to animation or you could drag a new panel, and that's these little hash marks. Just drag a new panel up and click this little 3D view box and switch it to Graph Editor. And of course, in Maya, you could switch to one of these views. I'm just gonna click this one right here. Okay, so now let's set a few keys. So in Maya, it's really simple. You just hit W and you hit S and you move it and you hit S and Oops, there you go, and you hit S, and you hit S again. And you maybe you can even rotate it. Great, so now, now we have this amazing animation. In Blender, you hit I, so let's go to the first frame. You hit I, and you're gonna get this huge menu. Now, if this is your first time, let's clear these out really quick. If this is your first time keying something, you're gonna get this big menu and you're gonna be confused. So we wanna set rotation, location, and scale keys. So we're gonna just click this guy right here. And then we're gonna to go to a new keyframe and we're gonna rotate it and move it and scale it. And we're gonna do that again. Great. Let's move our area down a little bit. And we can just play that by hitting Alt-A. In Maya, it's Alt-V. And check that out. We have animation on both programs. But let's say you wanted to key it here. And some people like to hit, you know, S for key. So I would hit I. And I get this menu again. Well, with auto key on, it'll key everything. But this menu can get really frustrating, especially if you're working on rigs. So down here at keying sets, you can click on it. And I like to pick either available, or if you scroll down a little bit, you can go down to whole character. All right, so we're gonna go to available. And what that is, is it'll key anything that has already been keyed once. So now when you hit I, it will key it without bringing up that menu. Even if you turn auto key off, you can still hit I. 
and it'll key it for you. In Maya, if you want to go between frames, you would hold down Alt, and you can hit the period or the comma keys, go between frames. Or if you want to go between keyframes, you can uh, hit the period in the Alt button, or period in the comma button, and go between keyframes. In Blender, you can quickly change modes and turn off and show things. So let's say you want to go to step mode. You hit T for tangent, you go to constant, and now you're in step mode. You hit T again and go to Bezier. You're in Bezier mode. You can hit V for like vector or violet and switch the handle types. So if you wanted, say, free or if you wanted vector even. And let's say some of you really want to like modify the tangent handles. Say like maybe that's a tangent handle that you want for some odd reason. You could always check it by going back into constant mode. And as soon as you go back into Bezier, it'll preserve it for you. See that? You can also hit V again and go to auto clamped. And I'll just keep everything nice and smooth. Now in the graph editor, if you want to turn off a few things, you can always select what controls you want on instead. So let's turn on these X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to hit V for visibility. See that? Now only these are on. It works for anything really. Now only those are on. Let's say I didn't want to manipulate these. I could hit tab, turn these all back on, and now I can't manipulate those. The rotations are stuck. Man. And I can hit tab to unstick them. If you ever want to scale keys, you could always just put your playhead about here, and you could hit S, or S and X, or S and Y, or you could move keys, hit G and X, G and Y, or just G. Or, if you really want to, you can rotate keys, because why not? Now let's talk a little bit about framing something. In Maya, you could hit F, and it's how you would frame something. It would go right on top of it. In Blender, you would hit the numpad period. And you can see it right here. It's under view, view selected. Or if you want to show the whole scene, you can hit shift C. Another thing you can do is use the dope sheet. So we're going to click on here and go to dope sheet. And this is really handy if you want to start timing things out. But what if you had multiple objects? So let's pretend for a second you had an object here, and an object here, and an object here, and an object over here. And they're all moving and going all over the place. And how do you know which object is which? Well, it's actually really simple. In Blender, you can click this little arrow icon, and it'll only show you what object is currently selected. And this is true for the graph editor as well. If I unclick the arrow, it'll show every object in the scene. When I click back onto this arrow cursor, it'll only show my current objects. Really handy. And the same thing apply. Uh, you could scale keys in here if you really want to, or move them. However, you can't rotate them. Bummer. Okay, so now you have this amazing animation. I don't really know what it is, but let's say you want to play blast it. Now in Maya, to play blast something, it's really simple. You could say, pick uh, this perspective camera, you like how it's framed, and this is what you want to play blast, right? So you'd go to window, play blast. In Blender, to play blast something, you would hit zero on your numpad. That'll set you to the current camera view. You can also click on view camera, and it'll set you into camera mode. Now, this camera isn't too good because we can't really see everything. So you can scroll down here and go to lock camera to view. 
Now you can rotate the camera and move the camera uh, like any other object and frame what you need. Now one more thing, we can see everything here. We can see the manipulation, we can see the, the lamp over here. What if you just want to see no controls at all? Now, this will be really important if you have a bunch of rig bones and controls everywhere. So you go to display, click on only render, and check that out. Now there's one more step. So first of all, I'm going to go to output and make sure it's on H.264. And I'm going to set my encoding to QuickTime. And you can find this all in the properties panel right up here uh, on this first camera icon. Now, I know some computers might be different, and I'm on a Mac, so I'm sure Windows will show this differently. But if you stick with H.264, you should be good. My output's going to be under temp. And I'm going to turn on some stamps. And stamps are just little things that appear uh, when you actually play blast it. So I'm going to show frame and uh, say file name. All right. In Maya, you could do something similar. You would go up to window play blast, this little icon right here. You can turn on what kind of settings that you wanted, H.261, H.264, etc. And if you wanted a heads up display, you would go to display, heads up display, and turn on whatever bits and pieces that you wanted. So remember, heads up display is exactly the same as Blender's stamp. And play blasting, the options at least, are under output. Now the final thing to do, make sure with only renders checked on, final thing to do is click this little icon right here. It looks like a little uh, clapper from a film set. So just click on that, and it'll start play blasting for you. Okay, great. So it looks like the play blasting finished. So what if you wanted to preview it? Well, in Maya, you could quickly just go to F check, but in Blender, you could go up here, click on video editing, just click anywhere on here and move it around if you need to and hit shift A, go to movie. I'm in my temp directory. Here's my file and check that out. So just like F check, you can scrub and you can even do a couple of transformations to the movie file if you need it before you send it out or re-export it out as something else. And of course, when you're done, you can just save the file and you'll be good. So hopefully this has been a good overview. And if you have any questions, just send us an email. Alrighty, guys, have a good one.